Hello everyone. My name is Alicia of Twist and Turbans and today's subject or topic is on indigenous women, Native American women, hair care practices. Now, um, I believe that a lot of information that we've been given over the years is like really bad information when it comes down to maintaining um, hair care, especially those of us with tightly curly hair or hair that is prone to becoming very, very dry. So I decided to just go to the source and just based on traditional American hair care practices and why not go as far back as, you know, go to the women or just, you know, do research on the women, um, women hair care practices that has been here since the hand of time, way before, you know, America was America. And for, um, additional information as far as the women and the history of indigenous Native American women. Many were of dark skin. They had um, tightly coiled hair like um, us women of today. <laughs> um, hair that's prone to dryness. But quite a few were able to grow their hair very, very long. And what was important is that to figure out what did they do and what did they use in order to be able to grow their hair healthy, long and strong. And what are their what were their practices during that time? And what are the practices today? But a lot of information that is available to us may be not so good information or not the perfect or great information that, you know, that is available. So one thing I've learned that indigenous women of that time, um, their hair care practices mm -hmm. of that time is that they use a lot of oils. They also use animal fat to uh, keep to retain moisture in their hair, I believe. Bear, um, a bear um, grease or bear fat. Um, they use, I believe, um, grease or fat from deers and many other animals to uh, retain moisture into their hair. They use plenty of oils and, and a mixture of herbs for the scalp and for the hair also. So I think that's one of the key ingredients that we are missing. We applying all these butters and all this other stuff. I'm not saying go out and just get you some animal fat, get you some bear fat and start applying to the hair. But you can find um, ingredients or find um, products that will somewhat mimic, um, you know, bare fat or mimic all, you know, grease, like a heavy um, oil base or a heavy um, pomade or something that will uh, help the hair retain moisture over a period of time. Another practice I've noticed is that they wore their hair in braids majority of the time. The hair was in twists or they wore their hair in dreadlocks. Braids, twists, and in, in Dreadlocks were the primary hairstyles. If it wasn't in those styles, the hair was just out, worn out in a fro, an afro. But for length retention, the twists, braids, and dreadlocks were the, the source or how they actually grew their hair beyond, you know, I mean, two longer lengths are beyond armpit or waist length. You know, those hairstyles is what they um, accomplished during that time frame as far as retaining, of course, length retention. Another thing that they 
did not do, they weren't styling their hair all the time. The hair was usually, if it was twisted or braided, it was left in a braids over a period of time. But the most important thing is, you know, using a thick, a heavy um, oil or butter base or some type of homemade type base that will help the hair um, hold on to moisture and protect the hair from the environment for longer periods of time. You know, these women during the time the hair was healthy, the hair was able to grow long and strong and they were able to maintain, um, you know, amazing lengths. Uh, 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 some more information that I've learned is um, I believe a lot of, you know, some of the products or um, I think the bear grease that they use in their hair was like very moisturizing to, um, to the hair. So it just helped the hair hold on to moisture where the hair does not um, dry out. And as far as cleansing and removing, um, you know, such fats, um, you would need a really good cleanser. You know, that, that's the only way I can figure if you want to cleanse your hair and keep it clean, you know, you're going to need a really good um, shampoo or a really good cleanser just to get all the stuff out and then um, start all over again with moisturizing and everything else. Um, and spring water you know, was another item that they used to, you know, for as moisturizing the hair using some type of spring water or um, rosemary water or something to keep the hair hydrated, soft, and pliable. So I highly recommend um, you simplifying your hairstyles because I believe that that is one um, thing that can really hold back on you retaining length or growing um, amazing length. And that's maybe an also factor why you may be stressing over your hair because when I wore my hair loose majority of the time, it was to me, it was a lot of work. And I live in a climate where there's high humidity, a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture in the air, and my hair won't lose all the time. It, it, it doesn't work well with my hair. So braids and twists worked wonderful for my hair and wrapping my hair, it just is like an added bonus into um, me maintaining the, um, say the integrity or, you know, the structure and the health of my hair, you know, for longer periods of time. So keep your hairstyle simple, protect your strands because our hair strands are very, very fine and is prone to breakage. If you have fine hair, hair that's prone to breakage, your focus should be more on protecting the strands, keeping it moisturized, keeping the strands as healthy as possible, keeping your scalp and hair clean um, as much as possible. As far as the scalp goes, um, from my own personal experience and from research, the only way you're going to alleviate a lot of scalp issues. You have to clean the scalp. You have to get all the, the sebum, the junk, and all that other stuff off your scalp. And then just follow up with an oil, a thick oil, olive oil, castor oil blend, you know, with a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of lavender, you know, may, maybe blend both of them together. Um, add it to your oil and apply it to your scalp, massage it to your scalp. And you do that on a regular basis, your, your scalp will improve over time. And the health of your scalp will improve over, the, over time. And you'll have less issues or scalp-related issues right after, if you do this, right after you finish cleansing your hair. So 
stick with the natural, more natural products that is good for your hair, um, especially in the scalp area. You want to focus on, you know, as close to natural products as possible and um, deal with soaps that's more pH balanced for your hair and for your scalp so you don't irritate the scalp. And by doing those things, your hair will grow. Your hair will love you. But um, that's based on my experience. But another thing that I realized with um, Native American women and their hair practices, especially from back in the day, their regimens were very, very simple and easy. I mean, a lot of the stress that we go through as far as our hair is in maintaining our hair. I think it has a lot to do because we want all these different styles or we just want to fit in or we just want to be creative with different looks or something with our hair. And we're doing a whole lot of damage because we tend to forget that our strands are very, very fine. At the same time, while trying to, you know, get these, get this elaborate hairstyles or hairstyles, your hair to look a particular way and trying to maintain our hair so it will um, stay, you know, or stay, our, stay a particular way or look a particular way for a long period of time. And we end up doing more damage than good to our hair. So simple. Simplicity is the key to great hair health. As long as you focus on simplicity, your hair will love you back. Because <laughs> then now you're showing love to your hair and your hair is going to love you back. So you get rewarded um, for as hair health and hair growth just by keeping it simple and understanding um, the nature of your strands. So I guess that's just about it for now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. If you have any added um, information about indigenous Native American women of, you know, the past of the 19th century, of the 18th century, the women, you know, before America became America, if you have additional information, please leave them in a the comment section below and please share your thoughts. I thank you for watching. You have a wonderful day. Goodbye.